I am here now with Dana Cobb and Alex Eschel-Brenner from the AT&T Performing Arts Center, and they're going to give us a bit of a tour here. We're on the fourth floor, uh, which gives us a really great vantage point of an expanding Dallas Arts District. So give us a little bit of a, of a guide here, if you can. Yeah, this is a great spot just to take a look at a lot of different key features that the Dallas Arts District has, including the AT&T Performing Arts Center's Annette Strauss Artist Square, which is our outdoor amphitheater here. We've got Clyde Warren Deck Park that's just completed here, going to be opening in fall of 2012. Then we also have the Perot Museum of Nature and Science that's, that's kind of capping the end of the Dallas Arts District area and kind of connecting it with Victory Park as well as Museum Tower uh, that is our new home to some, uh, some residential folks that's going to be opening here in just a few short months now. Yeah, what has been known as the Woodall Rogers Deck Park project has been renamed and it's really taking shape and we're going to take a walk here Dana and talk about what's going to be happening um, in the next few weeks particularly back here on this lawn Strauss Square. Well we actually have uh, the Gypsy Kings coming on the 2nd of May and it's our first performance as a BYOB uh, venue, which is great because then people can bring drinks, snacks, blankets, friends to come enjoy the show and um, enjoy it outdoors. We also have another series that we'll be starting called Sunset Screenings, which is outdoor movies. And that's also free and also BYOB. And we're doing that in um, conjunction with the Dallas Film Society. And there's a lot that happens here when Dallas Opera isn't in the house at Winspear, right? Absolutely. We are lucky to be able to play host to Lex Broadway series. Mm -hmm. um, we are doing American Idiot in the next couple of weeks and then Jersey Boys for five weeks. I love Jersey Boys. Second time here, right? Yes, it is the second time here, but uh, we have 91,000 seats to fill in those five weeks, so it's about the size of Cowboy Stadium. All right, we'll try to help you at News 8. We'll get the word out. <laughs> we, we, lo we love theater there. We love theater. And the Wiley as well is right over here. Yeah, or they're actually the Wiley is here. This is the Meyerson. Yeah, the Meyerson Symphony Center is the home to the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. Uh, it's been open since 1989, so they're actually one of the one of the founding buildings here in the Dallas Arts District. So uh, we're kind of doing our part in, in building the different types of arts experiences that you're able to have within the Dallas Arts District by by now being a presence here in the area. Yeah, it's great. Let's continue our walking tour and talk uh, particularly about the design of this building, the architecture, and, and it really does lend itself to providing people a vista to what's happening in Dallas Arts. Yeah, the Winspear Opera House was actually designed by Norman and Foster and Partners, and uh, Dallas is one of the only area, or is the only area in the world that actually has four consecutive buildings that were designed by Pritzker Prize winning architects. So we've got the Winspear Opera House, the Wiley Theater across the street uh, was designed by Joshua Prince Ramis and Rem Coolhouse, and then we have the Meyerson Symphony Center in the district as well with the uh, Nasher Sculpture Center. Yeah, let's let's talk about the Wiley, which is right over here. It's this it's this uh, silver building. It's sort of uh, it's a bit of a jewel box right in the middle of the Dallas Arts District. It is, and uh, the uh, Wiley Theater actually play is the home of Dallas Theater Center, and also Dallas Black Dance performs there. We have a lot of other performances. Um, Titus Dance and Music is presenting Madeline Perot and um, Diavolo in the next upcoming month. So it's it's definitely a versatile space, and um, we're really proud of it right here in the middle of the Arts District. Yeah, and we're going to continue walking over this way. We've got some of the crew here getting ready for uh, tonight's performance, but we want to walk on over here and, and get a shot, if we can, Bobby, of uh, Booker T. Washington High School of the Performing Arts. I mean, talk about a unique experience for students who are there being a part of what goes on at the AT&T Performing Arts Center. Talk about that and the unique experience that students have. Well, Booker T is um, actually some famous alum like uh, Nora Jones, and we work very closely with Booker T um, in presenting different educational series. They have a lot of access to rehearsals and performances, and really one-of-a-kind unique experiences is being part of the Arts District. Yeah, well, we're going to continue walking here. We have a lot going on. There's a, is it a 70,000 square foot retractable, movable glass window? Uh, yes, well, it's essentially what we have uh, is our small, small, small scale of uh, what you all are experiencing out at Cowboy Stadium right now. Um, but we have a portion of the Salmon's Glass facade that actually has the ability to raise directly up. All right, guys, so let's continue our tour down to the lobby on the bottom floor of the Winsper Opera House. And there is not one bit of space here on the grounds or elsewhere that goes wasted. In fact, you have a patio session, right? Yes, uh, we play host to Patio Sessions, which is our outdoor music series for new and emerging local artists. We do it every Thursday from 530 to 730 out on the patio. And what's great about that is we also have food trucks, 
People can bring their blankets, uh, be able to purchase food from local vendors. It's really uh, organic and fun and a great way to unwind after work or after school um, for the po folks who are downtown. Yeah, there are some great five-star restaurants in this area, but if you want something more eclectic and really just as good in a lot of ways, I love the food truck movement in this city. Yeah, we have the food trucks here during patio sessions, but also during the week, we have them during lunchtime, and it's really amazing to see how many people congregate and really take the opportunity to unwind, take their lunch break, get great food, and take advantage of this beautiful campus. And Alex, I know there's 70,000 square feet of glass in this structure. Yeah, absolutely. That's combined with the Winspear Opera House red glass that we have here that surrounds the drum that people typically think of, but then also the glass facade uh, that we have as well uh, encompasses that too. And there's part of this building, part of this glass facade that is movable, and, and for and for what purpose? Uh, that's exactly right. Actually, this portion out here of the Simmons family glass facade has the ability to raise straight up. Um, so the purpose behind that is to allow for us to host both indoor and outdoor activities uh, while creating that, that kind of inside and outside experience for guests. Um, so it either serves as a, as a nice mass exit for guests, if that's what we like to do with it, um, or just to be able to, uh, to develop the two into, into one event. And look at this masterpiece. Finally, this is the chandelier that has so many people talking when they come here to the Opera House. Yeah, this has really become one of the signature pieces of seeing a performance here at the Windspear is the dramatic moment where right before the show begins, they raise the chandelier. It's actually 318 acrylic tubes uh, that, that raise straight up. So it presents a very dramatic experience for guests right before the show starts. It's, it's really a piece of art. And we want to talk about the acoustics in here. There's no live mics for tonight's performance at all. No live mics. This this hall was actually designed with acoustics in mind. We have, in addition to the comfort of, of the seats, um, that, which are heat and cooled, temperature controlled from below versus heating and cooling the entire building, um, they're also micro suede fiber, which is um, absorbed sound. Um, the walls that are uh, hand carved wood of, with an overlay of 10 karat gold, specifically designed to bounce sound and absorb sound the way that a true opera house or performing arts facility of this size and um, techno technological advancement would yeah. do. Nothing overlooked, no detail overlooked, and I thank you both for giving us a tour. Dana Cobb and Alex Eschelbrenner from the AT&T Performing Arts Center. Thank you both.